Welcome back, Canaanites. I recently broke down the new gameplay footage revealed on the 23rd, but I also wanted to dedicate a couple videos to specific topics. The breakdown was meaty enough as it is, so starting with a look at the new and returning armory of Halo Infinite, plus a little speculation, we'll dive into specific topics surrounding the game. Much like we've done with the recent armory videos, let's open with the UNSC's guns, starting with the returning battle rifle, which we can see is very close to its Halo 2 and 3 incarnations. The scope looks a little bigger than it's been before, but that's not really an issue, at least not to me. The barrel, for the brief time we can see it, doesn't look like either the Halo 2 BR-55 or the Halo 3 BR-55 HB, so this is likely a new variant. One thing we can immediately notice is the presence of several rails on this BR. With the Upgrades tab we saw in Halo Infinite's menu, one can't help but wonder if weapons, including this BR, will be customizable, at least in the campaign, to some degree. From there, we get into new weapons. First up we have the MK-50 Sidekick, a new pistol that fires 10mm ammunition from a 12 round magazine. On the side of the grip we can see what looks to be a manufacturer's logo, and it's not one we've seen before as far as I can tell. It'll be nice if, when we get closer to Infinite's release and I do a Halo Infinite Armory video, I don't have to say Misery Armory produced every 5 seconds. Jokes aside though, I've heard a lot of people say that this pistol doesn't really look like it belongs in Halo, but honestly, at least to me, it doesn't look any more, you know, quote unquote, out of place than the Halo 2 pistol, which itself looked rather simple in design. That said though, we next have the VK-78 Commando, a fully automatic rifle that marks the first in Halo's rifle armory, I believe across games and the expanded universe, to not be of bullpup design. The Commando fires 6.5mm ammunition from a 20 round box magazine, and as presented features a holographic sight, side mounted ammunition counter, and a muzzle brake. Like the BR, we can see that it has a rail system, so one can't help but wonder if it'll be somewhat customizable. Unlike with the sidekick though, I fully agree, the Commando definitely does not look something I would expect to see in Halo. As I said in my breakdown video, it looks like something I'd expect out of Destiny or even a modern military shooter. Next, we have the CQS-48 Bulldog, a new combat shotgun. Manufactured by the Misria Armory, <laughs> evidenced by Misria's logo on the gun's body, this pump-action shotgun holds 10 12-gauge rounds in a detachable drum magazine. According to reporting from IGN, the Bulldog is a new riot shotgun that will supposedly replace the classic M90 and M45 of previous Halo games. I'm hoping it's not a replacement and IGN got it wrong there, but if not, I can't say I dislike the Bulldog. It certainly looks like a Halo weapon. And wrapping up the UNSC side of things, as far as confirmed weapons go, is the Misria Armory's MA-40 Assault Rifle. From the cover of Shadows of Reach, we know this gun started seeing use as early as October of 2559, at least in regards to a post-created era. Its history before that is unknown at the moment. Its detachable box magazine holds 36 rounds, and the gun has the classic holographic ammo counter with built-in compass. Generally speaking, I'm really enjoying a lot of the new guns we're seeing, though that's obviously not universal. Still, if nothing else, I am loving all the information printed on the sides of these guns. That's really cool detailing. Moving on to the Covenant, we have several new banished guns, but before that, we'll again start with returning classics. First is the plasma pistol, which we don't get a great look at, but the few frames of close-ups that we can see show it to be very similar to the Halo 5 Type 54 plasma pistol, which sported a more sanghili inspired design. It's not one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty damn close. Next, we have the Needler. We never see it in enough detail to confirm the variant, but even Halo 5's Type 56 Needler is almost spot-on to the classic Type 33, so not much to really talk about there. And then we have the Energy Sword. This new sword, to me, looks like it's based closely on the Halo 3 design, which was definitely one of my favorites, if not my absolute favorite. In any case, I love that the catch just above the handle is a lot more prominent than we've seen in more recent games. From there, let's talk about new stuff. The first we get to see used is a new banished gun called the Ravager. This gun fires three-shot bursts of red plasma and, as would be expected of a brute weapon, features a massive bayonet. According to Halo Infinite studio head Chris Lee via IGN, bladed weapons will have an increased melee lethality. He gives an example saying, quote, 
They take the same number of hits as other weapons to kill a fully shielded Spartan, but can one-shot a Spartan that has 50% or less shields. The Ravager builds up heat fairly fast, but like the Plasma Repeater of Halo Reach, features a venting option. I love that on the Repeater, and I'm very happy to see it return here and on other weapons. We next have the Pulse Carbine, which seems to combine the Covenant Carbine and Storm Rifle of recent games into one weapon, both in terms of design and to a lesser degree, function. The Pulse Carbine also has a three-round burst and can be vented as it builds up heat from firing. As a brief aside, if the Covenant Carbine is coming back, I gotta say I am not a fan of the Pulse Carbine's design. One of my biggest issues with the Storm Rifle was that its silhouette, especially from a distance, looked nearly indistinguishable from that of the Carbine, especially with the way the two were colored. So, there were plenty of times where I would run up thinking I'm about to get a carbine and end up picking up, or discovering at least, that it's a storm rifle. And I know others have had this experience. The Pulse Carbine looks to be even more in line with the Covenant Carbine's design, so if, again, the carbine is returning, I'm not a fan of this design. On its own? Maybe. As part of the larger sandbox? Potentially not. Anyway, after that we have the Mangler, a gun, presumably a sidearm in the hands of a brute, that seems to be a spiritual successor to the Mauler. It features two blades under its muzzle and fires what look like bolts of plasma from a revolving cylinder. Its reload uses something like a speed reloader, drawing further similarities to a revolver. The bolts it fires look to be headshot capable. And then, while not featured in the recent gameplay footage, I would be remiss not to bring up the currently unnamed new gun we've been seeing in Mega Construct sets. Looking something like a rifle or shotgun with a large blade along the underside, this new gun looks to be of brute making. Interestingly, the box art depicts this gun as shooting lightning. There was some debate about how accurate this depiction was, but as we'll discuss in just a bit, the presence of some kind of electro grenade has me wondering if these depictions are actually accurate. We'll have to wait and see for now. The last thing we'll cover in this section is the new shade turret. Featuring banished colors, the shade is very visually similar to the Halo Reach shade turret, though of course it fires red plasma, because brutes. Now that we've gone through all the guns, let's talk grenades. The classic frag and plasma grenades are returning of course, nothing special there, but we also have the return of the spike grenade from Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST, though their behavior seems to have changed just a bit. From the limited gameplay instances we've seen so far, the spike grenade has a bit of a delay after the stick before it detonates, even including a flashing timer. In addition to those returning grenades, we have a new type, some kind of electro-slash-stun grenade. Based on the wrapping on the grip, I'm going to guess that it's a banished-made grenade. I'll be interested to see if it's just a stun grenade or if the electricity actually does damage. If it's purely stun, I'm curious how that will work in multiplayer. That could be very interesting. Will it cause a Spartan to slow down when he runs through the electro field? Will they stop in place? Will it work like the stun feature on Halo CE's plasma weapons? Who knows? That covers all the confirmed and new returning weapons, but let's take a second look back at the recent Mega Construct sets, as I do believe there's some value in addressing what we've seen from them. From these sets, we've seen a number of new and familiar weapons. On the UNSC side, we have a gun resembling the BR-85, sometimes with a scope, sometimes without. An SMG. In one picture, it features a scope and silencer or suppressor, while in others, it lacks this. A Reach-style M45-looking shotgun. The Halo 4 and 5 sniper rifle. A machine gun, what seems to be the M343A2 minigun from Halo 5. And what I think might be a flashbang type of grenade, at the very least, I don't think it's a frag grenade. If these guns are in Halo Infinite, the BR-like one and the SMG really lend credence to the idea of customizable weapons. And if this is indeed a fifth type of grenade we're seeing in this image, it's going to be interesting to see how grenades are handled in Halo Infinite. If we have up to five different grenade types now, how many are we going to be able to hold at a time? Moving on to the Covenant, we have the Plasma Rifle and Repeater, the Covenant Carbine, the Brute Shot, the Focus Rifle, the Gravity Hammer, and a Halo 5 style plasma turret sporting banished colors, of course. That looks like a healthy offering with plenty of classic weapons alongside new ones we've already discussed. However, it's important to keep in mind that these are mega constructs, and who knows how much freedom they were given when arming these sets. 
It's entirely possible that 343 only shared a limited part of Halo Infinite's armory with Mega Constructs, or only allowed Mega to display a limited selection of it, meaning Mega would presumably have to quote-unquote fill in some blanks with older weapons just to make the sets more appealing. In short, I hope we see a lot of these weapons in Halo Infinite, but I'm not holding my breath on many of them. I think the Gravity Hammer is probably the only one we can safely assume will be present beyond a shadow of a doubt, though I do think their presence in these sets does mean they likely will be in Infinite. But still, you never know. Now that we've covered all that, let's move on to Halo Infinite's equipment. Briefly. A feature returning from Halo 3, equipment are items that the player can pick up during gameplay and deploy at their discretion. From the trailers, we've seen two primary forms of equipment. First is of course the <laughs> grapple shot, which I'm simply calling the grapple hook or grapple. This seems to be a permanent form of equipment, at least in campaign, allowing players to traverse maps in unique ways as well as being useful in combat. After use, it has a brief cooldown period. I'll be curious to see whether it's ever present in multiplayer or if it's a pickup. The second item we see is the drop wall. It's hard to say at the moment if this is of UNSC or Banished make, I'm personally guessing UNSC at the moment, but this basically works similarly to the deployable cover from Halo 3, putting up an energy barrier between the player and enemies. Unlike the deployable cover, this shield is one way, blocking incoming fire and grenades, but allowing the player to shoot and throw through it. It's also interesting to note that when the drop wall is picked up, the grappling hook is no longer selectable, or that's what it appears to be. I'm curious if we'll be able to switch between the grapple and any other piece of equipment we have, not unlike how we switch between grenade types. That covers the equipment for now, so let's wrap up with the vehicles we know about. In the gameplay trailer, we see the Warthog sporting its 343 design, and of course the Pelican, though its model still remains unknown. I'm personally still hoping it's a D-78, the model between the classic D-77 and 343's D-79. We also see a Banished Phantom, which as I've said, I hope gets a serious design overhaul before the final game. And on the recently released cover art for Halo Infinite, we saw a crashed Wasp, seemingly confirming the vehicle's return. I personally love it in Warzone, even if it is a little weak in that incarnation, so that's going to be pretty cool. Going back to Mega Constructs, we saw the Mongoose, a Banished Banshee based on the Type 26B design of Halo Reach and Halo 4, and a Banished Skiff, which seems to be something of a land-based troop deployment vehicle. Sadly though, that last one won't be drivable. But I do believe that should cover every known part of the armory for Halo Infinite as of the making of this video. What weapon or vehicle has you most excited? What weapons or vehicles from previous games do you want to see return? I'm hoping for the Railgun and Sticky Detonator myself. And of course, how do you feel about the return of equipment? Are there any previous forms of equipment you would like to see return? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for now, but stay tuned to Halo Cannon for more Halo Infinite news. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canonites.